Your goal in Cover Your Assets is to win the most money by building a stack of valuable assets. You can add new assets by playing pairs of matching cards, but the asset on the top of your stack is exposed, so your friends can steal it from you if you aren't prepared to fight back. Assets that have been fought over become worth even more money, especially since the most valuable cards in the game, gold and silver, are wilds that can be used with any asset type. The only way to protect your best sets is by covering them, since only the top of each player's stack is vulnerable. There's some strategy in when you choose to attack or play it safe, plus a lot of luck, which keeps this game nice and casual. For your first game, pull out the Move, Swap, and Penny Jar cards from the deck, if you're playing with a newer copy of the game that includes them. Those cards are for the optional advanced rules, and this video is only going to cover the basic version. The game is played over a few rounds, until someone has earned over a million dollars. To set up each round, shuffle the deck and deal five cards to each player. Then flip over the top card from the deck to start the discard pile. Starting at the left of the dealer, take turns playing until the cards run out. Then count the total value of the assets in your stack to get your score. Then shuffle and reset, and keep playing rounds until someone has earned more than a million dollars. Usually that takes three or four rounds, depending on how many players you have. Whoever has the most money wins. On each turn, you get to do one action using the cards in your hand. Then at the end of your turn, you'll draw back to a full hand of five cards. The simplest option is if you have a pair of matching cards in your hand, you can play down that pair as a new asset on top of your stack. When you add a new asset, alternate between vertical and horizontal to keep the separate assets distinct. That especially matters when you have two assets next to each other that are the same type of card. You can also make a new asset by pairing the top card from the discard pile with a match from your hand. And if you have gold or silver cards available, those are wilds that can be used in the place of any asset card. So you can make a pair from your hand or the discard pile with one card of any type and a wild. But keep in mind that wilds are really valuable, so using them might make your asset a target for theft. And you can't pair two wilds together. Every set has to have at least one normal card in it, which you keep visible on top. And now, the option you've been waiting to hear about, let's talk about how you steal your friend's assets. If you have a card in your hand that matches the uncovered asset on top of someone else's stack, you can play that down as a challenge to attempt to steal that asset. Then the person you're trying to steal from has a chance to defend by playing a matching card from their hand. This goes back and forth until one player runs out of matches to play, meaning they lose the fight, and the winner takes that asset plus all the cards used in the fight. Remember, gold and silver are wild, so you can use those to attack or defend any type of asset. And to clarify, you don't have to keep fighting just because you can. You may choose to save your cards for later, and that's especially common with wilds. Once either player runs out of matching cards they want to play, the winner takes all the cards that were committed to the fight, adds them into the asset that they were fighting over, and puts it on the top of their stack. So if a particular asset is stolen or fought over multiple times, it can become super valuable. One limit on stealing? The first asset at the bottom of your stack is called your nest egg, and that can never be stolen. You also can't steal from anyone else until you have a nest egg of your own. Your last option for how to spend your turn is just to discard a card. So if you can't make a new asset or start a fight, or even if you could but just don't want to, you just spend your turn by discarding one card from your hand. Then whatever action you picked for your turn, you'll finish by drawing back up to a full hand of five cards, and if anybody else also played cards in a fight with you, they'll draw back up to five as well. Then it's the next player's turn. Eventually, the deck will run out. When that happens, you'll stop drawing cards, but keep playing turns around the table until every card has been played or discarded. Some players might run out of cards faster than others, and that's fine. It just means that they're defenseless if their assets get attacked. These last few turns at the end of a round are often the most dramatic because every card counts. The last thing I want to talk about is some common questions new players often wonder about. So first, new assets are always made with exactly two cards. Even if you have three matching cards in your hand, or with the discard pile, you just make a pair. And keep that third card in your hand to maybe use in defense if someone tries to steal from you. Also, you can't play down cards from your hand to add to an asset that's already in your stack. The only way assets grow is when they're being fought over. Next. You can't use anything from the discard pile for a fight. Only use the discard pile when you're making a new pair. And last, I want to clarify that even though wilds are worth more money than normal cards, they aren't considered any stronger when it comes to winning a fight. 
All that matters is who plays the last card. So for example, if you challenge this set of jewels, and I choose to play a gold to defend them, then you play another jewels card. If I don't defend again, you win the fight. Play hard and have fun. Remember, you play rounds until someone has over a million dollars, or you can set your own threshold lower or higher than that to adjust how long the game will take. Subscribe to keep learning new games, and suggest other games you want to learn in the comments. I'll see you next game night.